I'm back working on the Mustang today. I'm going to be working on the door skin that we put on in the last video. There are some issues with how the skin is folded over on the corners of the door that I need to take care of today. So let me come over and get the camera zoomed in tight to show you where we're going to be working and what the uh, things that we're going to try and fix today uh, look like. So here's the front corner of the door and you can see when that door skin is folded over it's not laying completely flat. You got this big uh, point kind of sticking up and it's, it might be hard to see from this angle. If I come down here like this, I think that's a little better. You can see that it really bends sharply and sticks way up in the air. I can't have that. You know, this is supposed to be a flat corner. The thing is supposed to just meet at the edge, you know, more or less in one plane. So right now I have this thing that's over a quarter of an inch tall that's sticking up and that's not going to be uh, what you want at the end of the day. So we're going to have to deal with that. Now I don't just want to cut it off with a grinder and create a couple of open edges on the bottom of the door. So I have to figure out a way to get rid of this thing but not leave two flaps of sheet metal with, uh, with just a hole in the middle. Here's a little demonstration I set up to help myself understand what's going on with this door skin. I have a piece of aluminum foil that I have creased on two sides to make a corner. And then I just have a flat piece of sheet metal here to hold everything in place. This is going to represent the door shell. This will represent the door skin. So when I put that the skin around the shell and you fold over the flange, let's say on the side, and then you fold over the flange on the bottom, there was too much material at the corner, you wound up with this big bump of material left over. Now it's not as easy to work with as aluminum foil, so I can't just push it over and you know fold it back. It'll also fatigue the steel to the point that it might just crack on you anyway. It's not going to bend that tight and allow you to work it that a lot. It's not as malleable as this really thin foil is. So really what I think I want to do is try and just cut this off to a point where it's not as tall. I can't really tear this without messing up the whole thing. I think I just want to cut this off and then go in and maybe just grind it down flat and see if I, and then I might have to just tap it with a hammer in the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and just cut off a bunch of the material way above the point where the two flat pieces of the flange meet. Here it is. I just cut it off with the grinder. You can see now that I have still got two edges. What I'm thinking I might want to do now is try and to put a little notch right here to separate these two flanges now and get it to the point where I can fold one of them over on top of the other one. I think I'm still going to have some extra material left over, but let me put a little, cut a little groove right here in the corner and create a space for that extra material to move into when I hammer it. All right, so here's the back. You can see now I got a nice groove uh, in between these two flanges. And I think I might actually be able to hammer that down now and create a nice sharp corner because there's room for the material on both edges to flatten out and not run into the flange on the other side from around the corner. 
So let me try and hammer that down and we'll look and see what it looks like when I get done. All right, so here's that corner after a couple of minutes of tapping it with the hammer. You can see I got the two sides of the flange to fold down and sort of meet right in the middle by cutting a slot in that crease. So I think that is a good way to do it. I'm going to use that same idea when I get down to this next one in the back corner of the door. I kind of have the same situation there. All right, here's the back corner at the bottom. Compared to the front corner, this one really doesn't look that bad and I haven't even started to do anything on it yet. So I think I will do the same thing that I did on the front corner. I'll just cut a little bit of a groove in here to give a place for the flange on both sides to fold into. And then a few light taps with the hammer to bring them down to where they belong. Here's the bottom corner of the back of the door. I took the grinder and I cut a little notch right here above my fingernail and I just tapped it a couple of times with the hammer. I really didn't work it too much in this area. Mostly what I did was just make the cut and I think I'm pretty happy with how that came out. I'm not gonna overwork this edge. All right, I'm out here working on the door and I got some turkeys moving around in the other yard. Look back here. See them moving in the grass? There are several turkeys laying at the bottom of this tree, smaller ones, and these big ones are coming over. And then here we have, it's like the mama turkey. See, she's got her head up, looking at me. And these guys back over here. So these are the wild turkeys. We've seen them all summer. The babies are getting large now. There's always a big group of them too. Okay, I'm going to take one more step for today. I'm going to prepare this door skin so that we can weld it on to the door shell. And to do that, I need to grind off the e-coat that's on the door skin because it's not weldable. You can't weld through it. Now, I, went, I went back and looked at my notes and there were only about four spot welds on the bottom of the door skin when it was welded to the, to the door and three or four spot welds up each side. So I'm just going to grind off small areas along the bottom and the sides. I'm not going to try and grind that coating off of the entire flange or the door skin. You know, it's actually a, uh, a good coating to have on there, so I don't want to remove any more of it than I really need to. And the way that I'm going to remove it, I have, uh, this is a, a regular uh, 3 8 inch drill, and I have this sort of a flexible abrasive wheel on it and it's really good for getting down into corners and grooves and things like that. If you try and use a more conventional sort of a flap disc or some other kind of a hard edge, you know, uh, grinding wheel, you're not going to be able to get into the little corners where the meets the door shell. And you're going to have a lot of uh, difficulty getting all of that heat coating off. But with this abrasive wheel, it's got these flexible little uh, brushes on it. It's, it's real simple, it just comes right off, it takes no time. So I'll set it up and we'll grind off a couple of them and show you how it works. All right, here we go. So that goes pretty quick. I was able to do one, two, three, four, five spots along the bottom you know, in less than a couple of minutes. So now all I need to do is do the sides and then this thing will be ready to weld on.
All right, that's it. All right, so here we are, end of the day. Door skin's all welded up and installed, finally. Took a little bit of time, but we actually got it done. I think it looks pretty good. The next step will be to do a little bit of sanding to find where we need to put in a little bit of filler just to smooth everything out. I'm sure along that bottom edge, there's gonna be some places that aren't as nice as they might look right now. But that's just uh, part of how it goes. Come around the back side. Just touched up these welds a little bit. It's not too important to spend a lot of time fooling around with the welds that hold the skin on. As you can't see them, but I ground them down flat just so that uh, when we go in and paint and whatever, you know, we don't have big globs of weld sticking up. Tried to grind these down inside here on these two flanges, but those are a little harder to reach with the grinding wheel. But I did what I could. Again, those aren't going to be visible when everything's put back together. So you're not really going to see that part of the bracket anyway. So I got it setting up here in the sun. It looks pretty good. There are a couple little small dings and dents on it, but nothing major. Like I said, most of the work is going to be down along the bottom edge. But this one looks, I think it looks pretty good. Certainly is a lot better than the one we took off in terms of no rust spots and no big dents in it. So the next time we see this door skin, we'll be doing some sanding on it to find the highs and lows and putting some filler and sanding it down. That's it for now.